We now move on to the next matter of public importance. The President has also received the following letter from Senator McKim. Pursuant to Standing Order 75, I am proposing that the following matter of public importance be submitted to the Senate for discussion. The Albanese government should use our close relationship with the United States of America and the United Kingdom to free Julian Assange and bring him home. Is the proposal supported? The proposal is supported. With the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with the informal arrangements made by the whips. And I call Senator Shoebridge. Acting Deputy President, the Albanese government should use our close relationship with the United States of America and the United Kingdom to free Julian Assange and bring him home. And as we begin this debate in the chamber, I want to acknowledge the president, presence of Gabrielle Shipton, Julian's brother in the chamber. Thank you for coming, mm -hmm. Gabrielle, and all your courageous work. In 2010, Chelsea Manning, an intelligence analyst in the US military, bravely broke US law to blow the whistle to WikiLeaks about US war crimes. Chelsea was bound by US military and criminal law. She lived in the United States and was a United States citizen. In 2013, Chelsea was convicted of 17 serious criminal charges and sentenced to 35 years maximum security imprisonment. Four years later, Manning's government acknowledged the wrong in imprisoning her, and her sentence was commuted by US President Obama, and she was released from prison in 2017. In 2010, Julian Assange, an Australian journalist, living outside the United States with no legal or contractual obligations to the US, published Manning's material on WikiLeaks. This included thousands of documents that exposed the brutal reality of US-led wars. One of those was the deeply distressing video of cold-blooded murder by a US Apache helicopter of Iraqi citizens that included two Reuters journalists. Since then, the US has been openly targeting Julian Assange in order to prosecute him under the US Espionage Act. As part of this, in late 2010, the US National Security Agency added Assange to its manhunting timeline, an annual account of efforts to capture or kill alleged terrorists. For the decade that followed, the US named Assange as effectively an enemy of the state. And in 2019, he was charged with multiple breaches of the Espionage Act, with a maximum sentence of 175 years in prison. For the past four years, Assange has been held in solitary detention in a UK maximum security prison awaiting extradition to the US. It's now 2023, and Julian Assange is still in jail, still hounded by the US, and where is, he, where is his government? What is it doing? Julian Assange is not a soldier. He's a journalist with no connection to the US, no valid legal or co contractual obligations of secrecy to the US government, and is still in jail still being persecuted by the US, abandoned by Australia and facing a lifetime in a US prison. What was Julian's crime? Telling the truth. Telling this history tells the truth and the reality about the US-Australia relationship. The real reason Julian Assange is still in jail is because whether it's Prime Minister Albanese or Prime Minister Morrison, Australian leaders are willing to trade a citizen's liberty their right to speak truth to power for a close and unquestioning bear hug from a US president. They say truth is the first victim of war, and in the case of Julian Assange, that's a truth the whole world is seeing. I'm standing in this chamber today with my colleagues, echoing the concerns of millions of Australians who can see what is happening to Julian Assange as an outrageous attack on journalism and on the truth. The Albanese government, it's true, have raised the imprisonment and extradition of Julian Assange when speaking privately with their US counterparts. They've had quiet chats, maybe a carefully worded communique, but they've never even put a single element of the Australia-US relationship on the line for Julian's freedom. Days ago in Brisbane, US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken launched an extraordinary attack on Julian Assange. He backed in allegations that Julian had not only engaged in serious criminal conduct, but he'd risked harm to US national security. All the while, Australia's Foreign Minister, Senator Wong, stood by mutely, not defending Julian and accepting Blinken's lies. It was almost as though she believed them. The US relationship, we're told, is critically important to both countries, and many hoped this would work in Julian's favour. But the reverse, it seems, is true. We had the US saying to our Prime Minister, 
buy our nuclear submarines, fighter planes and missiles, host our bases, embed our spiles. Don't forget to smile like it's good for you. And by the way, we will jail your people whenever we choose. And what is Prime Minister Albanese saying? Sure. What a deal. When I talk with the many good, committed people who are working to bring Julian home, they tell me how they hope that Labor will do what is needed to make this happen. Because failing to do so sends a clear message to our biggest allies that Australia is a walkover. So we say to Prime Minister Albanese today, if not now, then when? When will you tell the US that the next purchase of US military equipment is on the line, or AUKUS is at play, if they don't respect our citizens' right to truth, and if they don't end the prosecution so that we can free Julian Assange and bring him home? Thank you, Senator Shoebridge. Senator Rennick. Thank you, Acting Madam Deputy Chair. Um, look, I uh, support this motion to a degree. I think that there should be some facts put on the table. Uh, my understanding of it was that uh, the crime that was uh, alleged against uh, Julian Assange should have been actually put on to uh, some Guardian journalists who actually released the encryption code uh, that gave access to the WikiLeaks file. That was actually by The Guardian, who, and these particular journalists actually wrote down the encryption code in a book that they wrote about WikiLeaks. So I fail to see why Julian Assange is actually being held accountable for this particular so-called crime uh, and not The Guardian journalists who released the uh, actual encryption code. I'm also led to believe that there was another um, you know, leaker of data that uh, also leaked similar files uh, that Julian Assange is accused of being guilty of, and the US government isn't actually going after them. Uh, furthermore, it's was been reported that Robert Gates said that no Afghani um, troops were actually put at risk, uh, uh, interpreters, uh, or no American uh, soldiers or Australian soldiers, I'm led to believe. So, look, I don't necessarily think that we should be putting our uh, troops in jeopardy when it comes to these wars, but at the same time, uh, I do believe in the role of free speech, and I do think that we need to hold uh, governments to account for the decisions that they make uh, when they start to go into other countries. Now, what's particularly annoying about the Assange case is, is that he was uh, basically disclosing information in regards to the Iraq war. Now, I think everyone in this chamber agrees that the Iraq war was a gross violation of human rights. Uh, there was never any biological uh, weapons of mass destruction. Uh, the whole thing seemed to be a setup. I mean, my, my view on this is, uh, you know, it, it, the year before that this war was started, uh, Saddam Hussein said that he was going to start uh, accepting payment for oil uh, in the euro, uh, and anyone that's followed the machinations of the International Bank of Settlements uh, and prior wars throughout history knows that whenever you try, start to attack in a currency, uh, that is when the bankers come in. And we saw that with the, when they took out Gaddafi. He was talking about um, bringing in an African diner backed by gold. That's not just my opinion. A bloke by the name of Sidney Blumenthal, who was an advisor to Hillary Clinton, uh, that was later leaked on WikiLeaks. He advised against that as well. Uh, we know after World War II that the Bank of England was nationalised. Uh, and all the debts from World War II were stuck into the Bank of England, hence that was the, and that was the way that wealth was transferred from the old world, old world to the new world, similar to World War I, uh, where Germany copped all the debts. So I, I think that uh, there needs to be much greater scrutiny, and it's very unfair to hold Julian Assange to account for basically trying to get to the bottom, uh, for me personally, of what was going on in the Iraq war. Uh, that, that just went on. I mean, you know, yet again, that went on, and this is what I fear with the Ukraine crisis: that it's just going to become this perpetual war machine, uh, and eventually it'll slip into the back pages. But there'll be still people getting massacred in, in Ukraine or, or shot to bits in the Ukraine in 10 years' time, uh, because you know it, it suits the journalists or whatever for the deep state to push this stuff back into the back pages. So uh, I, I support. Look, and the other thing that needs to be noted is I thought, you know. It's a, where, where do you draw the line today between what is journalism? It's, you know, I know that there was a court case in 1971 where uh, the, military, the US military tried to take the New York Times to account uh, for an article they post, uh, posted about Miley, I think Miley Massacre, was that the one? Uh, uh, Miley, sorry, apologies. Um, and the New York uh, Times won that because the, the court in the US held, upheld the freedom of speech uh, and, and, and the right to know. 
Uh, and, and I believe that, uh, you know, obviously, as we transition into the internet world, bloggers and all that sort of thing are entitled to uh, freedom of speech. Like I said, I don't think we should jeopardise our troops. But the point is this: is that there has been no evidence shown whereby anything that was leaked out of, uh, out of WikiLeaks jeopardised any troops. The war in Iraq and Afghanistan is now over, so there is no longer an ongoing threat to any of that information that was leaked. Uh, but furthermore, the question needs to be asked is why is it that Julian Assange uh, in jail uh, under heinous conditions uh, when other people that were more responsible for many more deaths aren't actually having the finger pointed at them and being asked, well, how did we get into this situation in the first place? So I think in the name of humanity, I think in the name of our relations, and this is not an attack on the people of the US uh, or Great Britain, it's an attack on the deep state that has taken over these Thank countries' you, governments. Thank you, Senator Rennick. Your time has expired. Senator White. Julian Assange and his legal proceedings has understandably attracted strong interest in Australia. It is important to acknowledge the depth of community sentiment about this issue. Indeed, my own electorate office receives calls from concerned members of the public about this issue, and I welcome those re representations. It's important to note that the Australian government has made clear its view that Julian's case has dragged on for too long and that it should be brought to a close. Both the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister have personally expressed this view to the governments of both the United Kingdom and the United States and will continue to do so. At this point, I might add that this is an issue that requires a measured and sustained dim dim diplomatic approach based on mutual respect. I have known Senator Wong for many years, and I know her approach to this matter and to all her important diplomatic work is a sound, is sound measured and su a sustained approach that prioritises diplomacy and respect. It's also worth making the point that the Australian government is unable to intervene in another country's legal or court processes, just as another country is un unable to intervene in Australia's legal processes. Further, as the Australian government is not party to these legal proceedings, we cannot influence them. They are a matter for the independent foreign court of law, not the Australian government. Similarly, while we are doing what we can in facilitating dialogue between the Australian government and other governments concerned, there are limits to what can be done until Mr Assange has concluded the necessary legal processes. In a comparable case, the resolution by government was only possible after legal processes had concluded. So we have, we have uh, so we have have to have these due process, due process legal processes occur and indeed respect those legal processes. But let us not also forget that, uh, as we do for other Australians facing legal proceedings overseas, the Australian government is following Julian's case closely and offering consular assistance to him as often and as comprehensively as we can. The Australian High Commissioner to the United Kingdom visited Mr Assange in Belmarsh Prison on the 4th of April and had the opportunity to check Mr Assange's health and welfare. This is part of consular assistance afforded to all Australians detained overseas and will continue to be to be so. Of course, part of the assistance is also the Australian government's expectation that Julian Assange is entitled to uh, due process as well as hum humane and fair treatment and access to his legal team. These expectations are important to the government and will continue to be conveyed. Again, it's worth saying that the Australian government, including the Foreign Minister and the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, cannot simply intervene in overseas legal processes. We can make, make representations and seek to get an earlier outcome that way, but we cannot force an outcome, and nor would we want another country forcing, an Australian, uh, forcing uh, their views on Australian legal processes. And so all these points still stand. Firstly, Senator Wong has made the point publicly that the case has dragged on too long and should be brought to a conclusion. That desire has been expressed both publicly and privately, in the media and diplomatically. We want to see Julian Assange's matters resolved and brought to a close. Secondly, until the matter is brought to a close and those proper legal channels of appeal and due process happen, there is little that an Australian government can do to intervene in the legal processes of another country besides making those representations I mentioned earlier. I understand from a personal view the public interest in the case, but these, lo le these uh, legal processes of a foreign country must be respected. And lastly, the Australian government has and will continue to provide Julian Assange with, Assange with uh, consular assistance to check on his welfare, to offer support and to make sure his health is being looked after as he's been and that he's being treated humanely and fairly.
Thank you, Senator White. Senator Roberts. Thank you. As a servant to the people of Queensland and Australia, I note that treatment of Julian Assange is not acceptable and should not be acceptable in a civilised society like Australia. There are two issues, Australian citizenship and did he commit crimes. Julian is an Australian citizen. No matter what he may or may not have done, Julian has the same rights as any other Australian citizen. It's terrifying that the rule of law protecting Australians from capricious government action can be trashed in this manner. Julian has lost 13 years to confinement already and is now the United States is threatening him with life in prison for telling the truth in exposing the murder of innocent civilians during Operation Enduring Freedom. Enduring Freedom, now that's ironic. Perhaps the United States needs a dictionary. Freedom means the right to free speech, especially for investigative journalists who investigated the US government's illegal actions. That's part of every journalist's duty, exposing illegal behaviour. The US Constitution guarantees freedom of speech. American governments have trashed their nation's constitution. While freedom of speech is not enshrined in our constitution, I'm advised it is enshrined in High Court rulings. Despite that, it means little, as many, including myself, discovered during COVID. Clearly, the US government is making an example of Julian Assange to dissuade other journalists from publishing the truth about other illegal US government activity. Let's connect the point about freedom of speech and COVID. We're now seeing remarkable facts emerging about big pharma, big government, big tech. Imagine if Julian had been freed during COVID and WikiLeaks was functioning properly. All the documents it's taken years to start prizing out of the hands of big government, big pharma state, showing the most egregious and inhuman breaches of truth and decency may have been brought to light much earlier. Instead, we had a compliant mouthpiece media that repeated the talking points of the pharmaceutical state. Government has three roles, protect life, protect property, protect freedom. Successive Australian and American governments are taking lives, killing people in unauthorised state-sanctioned killings, stealing property, transferring wealth from we the people to Big Pharma, removing freedom, imprisoning journalists and thereby destroying the nation's freedom and, all people's, and every person's freedom. Julian has suffered 13 years of deprivation of liberty for serving the country. Opponents say he jeopardised American soldiers and spies. Now, a court can decide that. Remember the weapons of mass destruction claims? The pe perpetrators admitted they had no evidence. Who held them accountable? Not one member of parliament, not one member of Congress. They got away with it. To anyone who thinks Julian Assange deserves the treatment he's getting, remember the wisdom of the words of St. Francis of Assisi. There, by the grace of God, go I. Our government needs to use our close relationship with America to bring Julian Assange home now. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Senator Wish Wilson. The media have dubbed Julian Assange the most famous political prisoner in the world. He is, for all intents and purposes, a political prisoner. The charge that has been brought against him of espionage is a political charge. So it was very disappointing to hear the Labor Party in here today rolling out the same lines that they've been rolling out for the last 18 months, that they can't intervene because of legal proceedings. Uh, I want to note, and I want the Senate to understand, they have consistently and rightly intervened to get Australians out of political prisoner situations. Many famous names that come to mind. Why is it that they won't do the same for Julian Assange? Now, when his wonderful and inspirational wife, Stella Assange visited Australia a few months ago. There was high hopes that maybe we were close to a deal to get Julian out of imprisonment and see him freed. And I have no doubt that Senator Blinken's comments last weekend were strategically designed to smash any hopes of any deal with this government. I wanted to say this to all the supporters of Julian Assange out there, his family, including his brother Gabriel, who is here today, and to Julian, who will be watching this debate. That is not going to happen. That is not going to happen. There are 30 MPs in this parliament, in the Friends of Bring Julian Assange Home group, who will not give up. There are millions of Australians who support Julian Assange. Who will not give up? We are not going to stop the campaign to have him freed. So sorry, Secretary Blinken, your propaganda and your downright lies at that press conference will not cut it. 
Let me tell you why it was propaganda. Julian Assange is being tried because of the rules of engagement disclosures. That's what Senator Blinken refers to in his statement, that Julian Assange was charged with very sensitive criminal conduct in the United States in connection to his alleged role in one of the biggest compromises of classified information in the history of this country. As Senator Shoebridge has already pointed out, uh, Private Bradley Manning at the time, who is now Chelsea Manning, was charged, convicted and pardoned. Julian Assange was a publisher, a journalist. Those rules of engagement files were published by media outlets right around the world. And to remind the Senate, Julian Assange and WikiLeaks got a Walkley Award in this country for the rules of disclosure leaks and the public interest stories that came out of that. So why is he a political prisoner and why is he being politically persecuted? I've got no doubt, because it is deeply personal for some very powerful people in this world, as well as the intelligence agencies who fear nothing more than disclosure. Why is he being politically persecuted? He is also being persecuted because this is an attack on press freedoms. The message they are sending is if you disclose our lies and our corruption, our war crimes, we will come after you with the full power of our state and we will do everything we possibly can to crush you. That is the message they are sending. That is why they are not giving up on Julian Assange. Are we going to let that stand? No, we are not going to let that stand. We recently had the 20-year commemoration of the Iraq War, and I agree with Senator Rennick. I cannot think of a darker period of history, certainly while I've been alive. And isn't it ironic, with the millions of people who perished in that conflict, right across the Middle East, the instability, civil war in Syria, the rise of ISIS, more global terrorism, isn't it ironic that no one who instigated that illegal and immoral war has been brought to justice. But the great truth teller of that war, along with Chelsea Manning, Julian Assange, sits behind bars, waiting 175 years of virtual death sentence. Are we going to let that stand? This is the Australian parliament. Julian Assange is an Australian citizen. It is un-Australian for us to turn our back on a mate. And we won't do it, Acting Deputy President. We will keep campaigning to Order. bring him home. Senator Bush Wilson, your time has expired. Senator McKim. Well, thank you, Acting Deputy President. It's so sad and frustrating that so many in this parliament regard Australia as a vassal state to the United States. And I might add, it's equally sad that when given an opportunity today in this Senate chamber to put the government's position, even though there's a Minister of the Crown sitting here in the chamber, we didn't even get to hear from a minister from the Labor government. Maybe this is what Labor calls quiet diplomacy. Outrageous. Not so much quiet as downright silent. It's even sadder that one of the people in this parliament that regards this country as a vassal state to the US is actually our Prime Minister. $370 billion on the AUKUS deal. We're hosting their armed forces with US bases on our soil. And we're going to host their nuclear submarines. We're going to embed their spies into our military apparatus. And we've been here time after time after time for the US. Whenever they've said jump, our only question is how high would you like us to jump? But it is time that Australia made it clear to the US that this relationship is a two-way street. We're not just here to deliver time after time after time for the US. They've got to step up 
and deliver on the way back for us. And Mr Albanese has been able to run his line about quiet diplomacy with some success until last week. And what happened last week was the US made it abundantly clear that they are not for the turning on this. Well, that's an exposure of the failure of Mr Albanese's quiet diplomacy, an exposure of the failure of Senator Wong's quiet diplomacy. And what we need is for the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister to make it clear to Mr Biden that freedom for Mr Assange is a non-negotiable in this relationship. He needs to stand up for his citizens. I mean, that is the very least that any Australian would expect their Prime Minister to do. Now, make no mistake, the situation Mr Assange finds himself in is not in any way about uh, his actions threatening the US national security. The reason the US is behaving like it is is motivated by three things. Firstly, their utter humiliation and embarrassment that Mr Assange exposed the US military as having committed murder and war crimes. That's the first reason. The second reason is their desire to send a chilling message to the media around the world that they shouldn't report on things like the US military engaging in murder and war crimes. A blatant attack on the press freedoms that are such a fundamental part of any liberal democracy. And thirdly, to send a chilling message to anyone else who might be thinking of blowing the whistle, like Chelsea Manning did in the future. Now, remember, the US government has freed Chelsea Manning. Rightly so. Rightly so. But what about the Aussie? What about the Australian citizen who published the information, who published it, who didn't leak it, He's festering away in Belmarsh Prison. It's an outrageous, outrageous injustice that we are discussing here today. What the Albanese government needs to do is insist that the US cease its attack on journalism, cease its attack on the truth, free Mr Assange and let's bring him home to his family and his country where he belongs. Yeah. Thank you, Senator McKim.